my nose. The next one I have is It's your girl Jay, and today I'm here with part two of my three-part wrap-up for February 2020. I read a total of 17 books this month. I had a pretty good star rating month, so without further ado, let us get started. So the first book that I'm going to talk about in this part of the wrap-up is the fourth and final book of the Diviners series, The King of Crow by Libba Bray. I end up giving this a 5 out of 5 stars. Are we really surprised? It is one of my favorite series, so what can I say? Honestly, I do think that the book was more of a 4 out of 5 star read, but nostalgia, just the love for the series overall, I'm giving it a 5 out of 5 stars, and if you have a problem with that, then I'm sorry, but deal with it. I am just so invested in this story and these characters, and I'm so upset that it's over, honestly. I just want more from this world and these characters, so I mean, like, if you want to keep writing the story, Libba Bray, I will not be mad about it. The next one that I read, another 5 out of 5 star read for me. It is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, and I spent a lot of time not wanting to read this book because of the hype surrounding it. I usually do not give super super hyped books good ratings. I think I just get them so hyped up in my head because everybody else loves them, but this one did not disappoint. If you live under a rock and don't know what Red, White, and Royal Blue is about, it follows a hate to love romance between the Prince of Wales and the son of the President of the United States, and it's real cute. I really love Henry and Alex. I love their romance. I think that they are so adorable together and I love their witty banter. I really loved watching them grow as the story went on, not only together as a couple but also alone and coming to terms with who they are and being okay with that. I'm also just like a huge fan of every single side character in this book and I am like hoping and praying that we're gonna get some spin-off series or like companion novels featuring those characters instead of Henry and Alex. Like, obviously they can be in it, but I need some more Junebug, alright? I read this book in two sittings because I was just fully invested in the story and I wanted to know what happened to these little angel baby unicorns, so I highly recommend if you have not picked it up, which you probably have because everybody and their mother has, but definitely pick it up if you haven't already because it is just so cute. The next book I read was My Not So Bollywood Life by Nisha Sharma. I ended up giving this a 2 out of 5 stars. Wah, wah. So this follows Winnie who has been told her entire life that before she reaches the age of 18 she will have met her soulmate and he is a man whose name starts with R and who will give her a silver bracelet as a token of his love. So she thinks that she has found this man already in her longtime boyfriend named Raj, but then she goes away to film camp in the summer and he ends up cheating on her, so she starts to second guess that a little bit. So Winnie is obviously devastated and she decides that she is going to throw herself into organizing the school film festival, but then Raj is named the film chair instead of her. And then she starts seeing a boy named Dev who challenges her to rethink her happily ever after and it's like the story of that. I, like I said, did not really like this book. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. I was bored throughout the entire thing. I couldn't connect to any of the characters. I found Winnie naive but also like bitchy to be honest. I did like how she stood up for what she believed in. Like that was a great aspect of her personality but she just like was infuriating to me. I also really hated Raj. I thought he was very pushy and like would not accept no as an answer from Winnie. Like, she just repeatedly was like, I don't want to get back together with you, and he's like, yo, let me try to make out with you in a bathroom. Like, hold up. Like, no, not about it. And then the romance between Dev and Winnie just seemed to be very insta-lovey, which we all know I'm not a fan of, so just was not for me. I'm sure a lot of people would enjoy it. It's a very cutesy contemporary novel, but personally, didn't like it. The next book I read was another five-star read, which was Kind of surprising to me, it's Baby Teeth by Zoji Stage. Like I said, I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I knew I was going to like it, 
but I didn't think I would like it that much. It follows Hannah, who is seven years old and refuses to talk. She loves her daddy, but she wants her mommy gone. Suzette tries to tell Alex, her husband, about Hannah's mischievous ways, but he of course does not believe her, because why do men believe women? She doesn't know how much longer she can take before she snaps, and it's like, the story of that. I know that a lot of people were disappointed with this read based off of the reviews that I read, but I have a weird thing for the evil child trope, so I was a really big fan. I also listened to this on audiobook, so you got chapters from Hannah's perspective, and those chapters just were real creepy because you heard the way that she talked and the way that she justified things in her mind and it was just really fascinating to me. Honestly everything that happened in this book was for shock factor and I know that a lot of people complained about that but I was into it. Hannah was an absolute monster like she was a devil child but I loved when Suzette started playing back and started like doing things back to her, which sounds really bad because like you don't want to egg on your evil child, but it was really entertaining. Neither character was likable, honestly. Like they both suck as human beings, but I was fully invested in their story. I wish that there was more from Hannah's perspective just because I found her so interesting and like I liked seeing how she justified things, but I do understand why it was written that way. But yeah, five out of five stars. I was super into this book. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap up is Puddin by Julie Murphy. This is the companion novel to Dumplin' and I ended up giving it a two out of five stars. Millie and Callie are complete opposites. Millie is fat and she has attended fat camp for every single summer since she can remember. But this year she has decided to branch out and explore her interest in broadcast journalism. Callie is the resident mean girl in town and she is beautiful and next in line to be the captain of the dance team. The two girls are forced to interact when an incident occurs where Callie is now needing to work at the local gym where Millie works and they start to realize that they may not be some different after all and it's like the story of their friendship blossoming. Like I said, two out of five stars. I really didn't like it. Callie was the downfall of this book for me, honestly. It had absolutely no redeeming qualities. She was supposed to have this grand character arc where she realizes that she's been wrong her whole life and like she needs to be nice to people but she just infuriated me the entire book. Like, it was not much of a development. Like, she was like, yeah, I mean, but whatever. Like, it just, I didn't like it. I did like Millie more than I liked Callie, but I can't necessarily say I liked her, if that makes sense, which was really disappointing because I loved her in Dumplin', but just something about this book and the way she acted just rubbed me the wrong way. Like, I love that she was unapologetically herself, that was a great message, but just something about her did not, was not a fan. I did like the female friendships in the book, but like I said, I think that Callie kind of made it very difficult for me to connect with any of the characters. And I also was not a fan of either of the romances, so two out of five stars. All right, everybody, so that is part two of three for my February wrap-up 2020. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you thought of them or some of the books that you read this month, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye!